Good morning. Today we are going to start again with our textbooks. It is a fun day because we have word problems today. Let's open to our textbooks to lesson 11 and start reading with letter A. Alex gets a $5 allowance each week. How much money will he have in six weeks? So each week he gets $5. That's one week two weeks, three weeks, four, five, six weeks. So five dollars times six weeks equals how much money he will have in six weeks total. Five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five, thirty. Five times six is thirty. So our answer is thirty dollars. Letter B. After five weeks, Dion has $30 from his allowance. He gets the same amount of money each week. How much money does he get each week? So this says after five weeks, one, two, three, four, five, he has $30 total from his allowance. And each week he gets the same amount, that means they are equal, which means we're going to share $30 equally, meaning we're going to divide into five weeks. And our answer will tell us how much he gets each week. 30 divided by five, you can say what times five equals 30. We know six times five is 30, so six goes in here. If you didn't know 6 times 5 was 30, you can count by 5's until you reach the number 30. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. How many 5's did you count? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And our answer is 6. So how much money does he get each week? Each week he gets $6. Letter C. Emma saves $10 each week. How long will it take her to save $50? So she is saving $10 each week. So this is week one, week two, week three. How many weeks does she need to reach 50? So I am sharing $50. That means I'm going to divide by 10 every time I'm sharing them in groups of 10 and I want to find out how many groups of 10 are inside of 50. Those number of groups represent how many weeks it's going to take for her to save $50. So I can simply count by 10s until I reach 50. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. It took me five groups or you can say five weeks or you can have simply said what number times 10 equals 50. If you already know 5 times 10 is 50, you could have just plugged that number in as well. Let's turn to the next page. So on the next page, they drew a picture for you for letter A. It is still the same problem from the first page where Alec, Alex gets $5 allowance each week. That's why they drew $5 for each week. And there are six weeks, one, two, three, four, five, six. And it's letting you know that we are trying to find a total from here to here, all of them. So week one, just like I drew and I said week one, week two, week three, week four, week five, week six. They're essentially doing the same thing using a different drawing, but still telling you what we're that we are multiplying six times five to reach the total. So five in here, five in here, five in here, five in here. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. And they're going to reach the same answer we did earlier. Alex will have $30 in six weeks. Go ahead and plug in your answers inside of your book for letter A. And then now let's look at letter B. For letter B, the problem was saying after five weeks, Dion has $30 from his allowance. So here's one, two, three, four, five weeks. 
he has 30. So we know the total and we're trying to find how much he gets each week. We are going to divide because we know the total and we need to find the number in equal groups. So we're trying to find the number in each group. So 30 divided by five, we just did that. 30 divided by five was six. Five times six is 30. So Dion gets $6 a week. And again, if you are unsure how to divide five equally, you're counting by groups of five until you reach the number 30. Five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. You did that how many times? Six. I'm going to go ahead and read um, letter C again just to remind you what the problem was. Letter C said Emma saves $10 each week. How long will it take her to save $50 total? So in this problem, we know the total. We need to find the number of equal groups. So what do we do? We can say what number times 10 gives me 50 total. We know five times 10 is total. Five times 10 is 50. Or you can say 50 divided by 10 uh, groups makes how much? Again, five times 10 is 50. So $10 for five weeks. So here's week one, week two, week three, week four, and week five. 10 on each, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 in total. So it will take Emma five weeks to save $50. Number one, a store owner put two pounds of sour balls in each bag. How many pounds of sour balls are in seven bags? So we know the store owner is putting two pounds of sour balls in each bag. That's one bag. How many pounds of sour balls are in seven bags? This is one bag. Two, three, four, five, six, seven bags. And inside of each bag, there are two pounds. And we're trying to find out the total in all. So you can add all of these twos, right? Or the faster way to do it would be to say, there are seven bags times two pounds each equals. Two times seven is 14. How many pounds of sour balls are in seven bags? 14 pounds. Or you could have counted by twos, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14. Number two, Mariam put 14 baseballs equally into two bags. How many baseballs are in each bag? So we know there's a total of 14 baseballs and we're going to share them, divide them equally into two bags. So we would say 14 divided by two equals. Our answer is going to tell us how many baseballs are in each bag. Or you could draw a picture showing that this is 14 as a total. We're going to divide it in half and we're trying to find out how many are in each bag. We can simply count by twos until we reach 14. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14. How many times did we count? groups of two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that means we have two sevens inside of the number 14. Or you could use your knowledge of multiplication to solve for this division problem. You could say what number times two is equal to 14. And we know two times seven is 14. Number three, Callista bought eight pound of cherries. One pound of cherries costs $5. How much did she pay? So we know she's buying eight pounds of cherries total, right? And each pound costs $5. So here's one pound of cherries. It costs $5. Another pound of cherries costs $5. How many pounds did she buy? She bought eight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. She's buying eight pounds multiplied by $5 for each pound equals, our answer will show how much she's going to pay in total all together. So we can put five in each because each pound, each bag has each pound of cherries is $5. You can simply add all of these fives or you can multiply it. Say eight times five is 
40. Let's count to be sure. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. So how much did she pay? She paid $40 for eight pounds of cherries. Ooh, number four is a really fun, juicy one because it has two questions. Let's read the question. It says, six boxes have five lemons in each box. Brian wants to put three lemons into each bag. How many lemons does he have? So first we're trying to figure out how many lemons he has. We know there's six boxes. And each box has five lemons. I know I'm multiplying because I'm trying to find the total number of lemons all together, right? Six boxes, five lemons. Five times six is 30. So there must be 30 lemons. Or you could have drawn a picture, and I love drawing pictures. This is always helpful. Six boxes. One, two, three, four, five, six boxes. Each box has five lemons each, so I would draw my five lemons each by writing the number five, and then I would just simply count by fives to find the total. Five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, and there is our 30. Let's look at letter B. It says, how many bags will he need? So we know he has 30 lemons, and we're going to put how much in each bag? Brian wants to put three lemons in each bag. So we're going to share the all total, the 30 lemons, divided by, we're sharing it by, three lemons in each bag. Our answer is going to tell us how many bags he will need. 30 divided by three. So you can count by threes, or you can use your knowledge of multiplication. What number multiplied by three gives you 30? I know 10 times three is 30. So that means 30 divided by three is 10. Now we can also use our method of counting by threes all the way until we get to 30. This is like saying how many threes are in 30? 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24, 27, 30. How many threes did we count? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And there's our answer. He will need 10 bags. Number five, 17 children want to divide themselves into two teams. Can they make equal teams? So we know we are dividing 17 into two equal teams, and we want to know if we can do that equally. Will there be an equal amount in both teams? So one way to figure out the answer is by just by looking at the number 17. We know, we learned a few lessons ago, that all the products of two, so anything you multiply by two, let's say two times six, two times seven, two times eight, two times six is 12, this is 14, this is 16. We learned that all the products of two, if you look at the ones place, we said the ones place has to have a zero, a two, a four, a six, or an eight. It must have one of those for their ones digit. And if I look at the number 17 and look at its one digit, it does not have a zero, two, four, six, or an eight, it has a seven. Just because of this, I know they cannot make equal teams. You cannot divide 17 equally into two. This is one way to, of coming up with our answer. Now we're going to actually do the dividing and the sharing to see if we are correct. Okay, and the way you do that is you can use, first you can use your knowledge of multiplication and say what times two is equal to 17. I know two times eight is 16, so it's not reaching 17 exactly, that's why it's not equal, there would be one left over. Or you can say I'm going to count by twos to see how many twos are in 17. Two, four, six, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, and 17. Notice that last one is not a group of two because there's one kid that will be left out. So that means you could make two groups of eight kids with one left over. Can they make equal teams? No. They can make two equal 
groups with eight kids and one kid will be left out. And that is the end of our lesson for today. You guys did such a good job. Let's go ahead and take a look at our workbook. Let's open to lesson 11. I hope you guys have some word problems. And you do, look at that. Exercise 11, you have some word problems here, here, and here. Oh my goodness, that is awesome. You have lots and lots of word problems. And at the end, you're finishing it off with a challenge. Great job today. And as always, if you need any help, please reach out and ask help from an adult. See you guys tomorrow. Bye.